guys welcome back to my kitchen it's me Gina and if it's the first time you're stopping by I am a wife and mother and I like to cook fresh meals for my family and post the videos here on YouTube and today because in Chicago even though all of my perennials are coming up it is disgusting and snowing so I decided to cook some picadillo uh, which is a Mexican like ground beef and veggie stew I guess you could kind of say but um, it's definitely like home type of food for my husband it's something he really likes um, and especially in cold weather so without further ado I guess we're just gonna jump right into our ingredients so we are going to be using today um, I like to use ground sirloin for this because it does cook for a while and also we're not going to be taking the fat off. We're going to be using it to flavor the caldo. So I don't want to use something like 8515. Is that correct? Is that math? I don't know. Whatever. The one with more fat because it'll just be too fatty and it'll be floating in the broth. So I would recommend uh, sirloin. This is 9010, but do whatever you want. Um, for our veggies, we are going to be dicing up some carrots. So I have three carrots here. I have three white potatoes, uh, but you could use whatever kind of potato you want um, as long as you peel it. So I mean, it really doesn't matter, but traditionally they generally use these white potatoes. Um, we're gonna be using uh, this, almost this whole onion. We'll be using part to make the broth and then part to saute with the veggies. So a whole white onion. We're gonna be needing four Roma tomatoes, and then uh, we're gonna be using some frozen peas. And then to season the whole thing up, because it's a really simple, humble dish, um, the main star ingredient is chile chipotle and adobo. Um, and this is frozen because we never use the whole can. So this is a little tip in case you didn't know that, that if you don't use your whole can of chile chipotle, just throw it in a Ziploc bag and freeze it, and then you can use it next time. So I'll toss this in the microwave so I can get one out. Um, and then furthermore, of course, salt and pepper goes in everything. We're going to need some thyme. And then, ooh, you guys, fancy. I have gotten, I don't know why this won't focus. Maybe it's dirty. Focus. Uh, North Suiza, and I actually bought a different one that is uh, beef flavored. So we're going to be using the beef flavored North Suiza today instead of the chicken. Um, and then also bay leaves, two or three of them, depending on how big they are. And then uh, some marjoram and then some actual whole cumin seed. So not cumin powder, cumin seed. So anyways, I think I'm going to get a new phone soon. So that way these will be better quality and it won't have so much problem focusing. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and first get everything prepped for the actual stew itself and then I'll come back and show you how we make the recaldo which is basically like a puree of veggies um, that is like the seasoned broth so give me a moment uh, while I decide if I'm going to do a time lapse or not okay so for our prep you're going to start off um, I always just use a jewel bag I save them and by jewel I mean just a plastic bag sorry I guess not everybody lives in the midwest um, so a plastic shopping bag I save them and I use them to collect my kitchen scraps so I just went ahead and peeled the three carrots and now I'm going to go ahead and peel the white potatoes and I don't know if you can tell because this isn't a time lapse but I'm using the tip of the peeler to remove the eyes of the potato and I literally just learned that like recently like I had no idea what the point on it the peeler was for and apparently that's what it's for so instead of like peeling off half of the potato to remove the eye go ahead and just use the tip of the peeler so I thought I would share that with you <coughs> excuse me lots of peeling going on here people Go ahead and set your kitchen scraps aside and then start to get everything into a uniform dice. So for the potatoes, I slice them in half and then I'm slicing each potato half into three sticks lengthwise and then like four pieces across. So they are particularly small dice. I would say probably about a half inch pieces. So go ahead and take care of your potatoes. And then I just collect them in a bowl off to the side because we're not gonna use them right now. And then for your carrots, go ahead and remove the stem end and the tip end. And then see these carrots that I had are like, uh, they're organic, so they're not like the big fatty carrots. So the tip end is like way skinnier than the trunk end. So for the trunks, I chop them into quarters and then into little square pieces. Um, but for the tips, 
you don't always want to follow like the same chopping regimen or you're going to end up with teeny tiny pieces for those so i just chop them in half um or for this one i don't even chop it in half at all i just sliced them straight down the little carrot stem dealy so that's that and then measure out half of a cup of peas before we go ahead and get our aromatics taken care of so go ahead and peel your onion and then we are going to put half of the onion into a fine dice and then with the other half we're just going to slice off a piece um, and set it to the side because that's going to go in the blender with the recaldo so we have the onion separated and then we are going to use use two or three cloves of garlic depending on how big they are so we're going to peel them and then set one aside with the piece of onion that we're saving for the recaldo or the broth because that'll go in the blender and then dice the other one or two or excuse me mince the other one or two because those are going to go in the actual picadillo so go ahead and get that taken care of and then lastly we are going to be slicing up our tomatoes so you don't even have to slice off the ends because we're just going to blend them so go ahead i cut each one in half and then cut each half in half again all right folks we are back um i just have placed a little bit of avocado oil which of course i forgot to put as one of the ingredients like always in the bottom of this uh this is i would call it a casserole dish pan it's actually my favorite pot that i have from my costco like the kirkland costco set that i have um my husband got it for me a couple years ago and it's they're really nice i really like them uh so i'm just gonna go ahead and stir fry this onion until it is translucent and then we will add our ground beef to the pot. And then I'm going to start getting the ingredients in this uh, Nutribullet cup for the Recaldo. And Recaldo is just basically a fancy name for, I guess, broth or broth concentrate, if you will. I don't know. I don't know, people. I just watch the Spanish videos and understand what I can, okay? I know Spanish is pretty good, but not that great. Um, no, I know it pretty good. Let's let's not even joke. Anyway, so this is our four Roma tomatoes that are just put in like uh, cuadritos or uh, in quarters. And that's just to help it blend up. This is the piece of garlic that I had set to the side, which it's not focusing on, but we're going to toss that in there. And then we also have our piece of white onion. Um, so this would be equivalent to one slice across the whole onion, um, but I made it a little bit th thicker since I'm doing it off of half. We're just going to try to smush that in there. And then I do have uh, the other clove of garlic that I minced reserved over to the side because we're going to be using that in here. Let's go ahead and stir this up. Almost ready to add our beef. I uh, chopped the onion pretty small so it'll get translucent nice and fast. Um, and then let's see if our chipotle is ready yet. So I've been defrosting this in the microwave. I feel one in there. So I'm going to go ahead and stick one of these in here if I can. And then I also will be adding, how much is it? Uh, I use a half of a teaspoon of cumin seeds. So uh, just to review what is in here, again, four Roma tomatoes, one uh, clove of garlic, one slice of... What is this? Onion? Wow, guys. Half of a teaspoon of cumin and one chile chipotle in adobo. And you can add more or less as you like. Um, and you can also add some of the liquid, which is the adobo or the seasoning, to this. And then we're going to go ahead and get that um, blended up. Uh, but let me open up this package of beef and get this in the pot uh, really quick. Okay, so I'm sure I don't need to go into too much detail about this. I plop the ground beef here in our pan and I'm just going to go ahead and keep breaking it up until it's well browned. And um, we are not going to drain this. And then, long story short, hilarious, those were not freaking chipotles. That was tomato sauce. And it was like a chunk in the middle. And I was all feeling around in there like, I know I felt one in here. So I have another package of them defrosting in my microwave. So once that happens, and it is the actual chipotle, I will put it in here and I'm going to fill it about halfway up with water and then blend this. So I will be back once the ground beef is browned. And this is blended, and we are ready for our next step, so hold tight. Okay, so I um, the ground beef is not completely browned yet. It's almost done. So now it's time to add our bay leaves. And I'm just doing two today because I found two nice big ones. And then I'm also tossing in our minced garlic. And we're just going to go ahead and mix these in 
and kind of let the oil get the juices going on the bay leaves and um, obviously take some of that raw garlic flavor off. So we're just going to let this go for like another five minutes or so and keep breaking that up. And then I did want to show you this is what our recaldo looks like. So this is kind of thick, so I probably will be adding some more water to the pan. Uh, but it just looks like a thick tomato paste broth dealy. And uh, so professional. And then this is, just in case you don't know, what a chipotle and adobo looks like. Because I was previously showing you freaking tomato sauce. Um, so this is just a smoked chipotle, or smoked chipotle, smoked jalapeno, and then they marinated it in this adobo sauce. So I did end up putting um, two of these in because we like our spicy, and they were kind of small, and then about two spoons of this adobo, which is super flavorful, so like never toss it away. Freeze it in a nice cube tray, or like freeze it like I did, and save it for later. So in any case, this has another minute to go, and I will be back. Okay, so... trying to charge my phone while I'm doing this, so let's hope it works, because the stupid charger doesn't want to charge my phone anymore. Um, so our beef is ready to go, and so now we're going to add in our carrots, our potatoes, and a half of a cup of peas to the pot. And we're just going to go ahead and stir these around and try to take uh, the cold off of them because I keep my uh, carrots in the refrigerator and um, obviously the peas were frozen. Sorry, I'm trying to concentrate and like not spill this on my feet because the phone is plugged into the wall. And I'm just trying to be really careful. So just go ahead and get it incorporated. And then uh, let it stay there for a second. And then for the sake of ease, I pre-measured our spices over here. And we have, to start off, two teaspoons of Nor Suiza de Res, or beef. I have a half of a teaspoon of thyme, a half of a teaspoon of marjoram, and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to the pot. And now we are also going to be adding our recaldo. This is super thick. Those were really large tomatoes. So don't toss this out. I'm going to use this to fill up the water so that way we can take advantage of it. Um, but let me go ahead and pause this for a second because the camera's doing that weird jumpy thing. And I want to get this mixed in pretty good without dropping it on my feet. So hang on one second and I'll be right back. Much better. There we go. So I went ahead and I stirred that up. I dumped the seasonings in and then I would say this is about a cup and a half um, of water that I use just to clean out this blending jar, whatever it's called, carafe. I keep struggling with that. So if somebody knows what the freaking blender jar is called, sorry with for all the freakings today, guys. I'm just feeling a little bit stressed out. Um, but I don't know what the stupid jar for the blender is called. I feel like it's called a carafe. So if it's not and you guys know, pop it in the comments and help a sister out. So here we go. Getting everything nice and incorporated. Try to scrape up any fond or any like tasty brown bits that have acquired on the bottom of the pan. And then uh, you can make this as thick or as thin as you like. Like I know that like, is it Puerto Ricans who also eat picadillo? They eat it uh, really thick, almost like a like a taco consistency, I guess you'd say, like a ground beef taco, but theirs is totally different, and it's got like olives and things in it, and I've never made that, so I probably shouldn't like speak to what's in there, but uh, the Hispanic, or the Mexican version, excuse me, is more of a soup, uh, so I prefer it to be kind of like a chili texture, but my husband likes it even thinner than that, like he likes it almost like a soup consistency, um, but I just don't like the idea of a ground beef soup in particular, like I don't know, it just kind of freaks me out, so we'll see. We might add more water, we might not. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this to a rolling boil. And uh, then we're gonna cover it and we are going to simmer it um, after turning the heat to low for probably about 15 minutes. And then I'll come and check the veggies because uh, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting to see when our vegetables are tender and then it's basically done. And uh, I did start off with the two teaspoons of Nor Suiza. Uh, let's pull this fire up. Um, which is very salty, so we will go ahead and uh, taste test it for salt before we serve it. We might need to put some regular salt, 
Um, or you can use more Nor Suiza, or if you didn't use Nor Suiza, you can just use total salt. Like, you really don't need to have chicken or beef bouillon. So it's a personal preference, peeps. Just trying to remind you that you can make your dishes yours. They don't have to be exactly the same as mine. So, anyways, Mommy got special mommy juice. Do you see that? And then, oh, this is my little succulent mandala that I'm growing, all these little baby succulents, but that has nothing to do with this. So anyways, I will be back. Okay, so it has been about 20 minutes and my children are screaming. Uh, I went ahead and I tasted it and it did need more salt, so I added about a half of a teaspoon of salt to it. And uh, the potatoes are tender, the carrots are tender, so we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this plated up and warm up some tortillas because that's what we eat it with and I will be back with the finished product. Oh, and take your bay leaves out, of course. Okay, here is our finished picadillo. Um, we're gonna go ahead, it's a little bit too hot to do a taste test, but I will zoom in here so you can see. It's a nice thick stew of the ground beef, potatoes, carrots, and onions flavored with chipotle and we're pretty happy about it so I'm just going to go ahead and end the video here. Um, oh, are you going to be able to taste it? I think it's too spice or too too temperature hot. Let's see if he burns his mouth, people. Mm, delicious, really good. Alrighty, so taste test approved by my real live Mexican husband. And that's it, folks. If you like this video, I'd sincerely appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, um, and or if you could subscribe. And I guess I'm gonna pop a little. Uh, Links here to some other videos that you might enjoy, and then we're just gonna say good night. So, good night. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night. <laughs>